Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Katherine Dreyer. I'm the admissions counselor here at Atlantis John Marshall Law School, and I want to welcome you to our Criminal Justice Honors Program Open House. We're thrilled that you've chosen to spend some time with us today to hear about this truly unique program. At this time, I'd like to introduce the dean of our law school. He's going to come and speak to you for a few moments, so please join me in welcoming Dean Richardson Lynn. And welcome to Atlanta's John Marshall Law School, where the bow tie symbolizes academic excellence and compassion. <laughs> uh, you know, I have to admit, I just have one speech for open houses, and there's a poor lady here that was at our Savannah campus recently and heard the speech. Uh, too late for me to change anything, but she will be able to tell that in Savannah, I talk slower. Uh, but glad you're here. And I want to thank our admissions staff, uh, the faculty, uh, staff, uh, student ambassadors, uh, uh, those people you'll hear on a panel later today, and, uh, and especially the professors who are teaching in our honors program in criminal justice for being here today. And what all of us want is to make sure that you leave with no unanswered questions. And since you'll think of questions later anyway, that you know who to ask. Uh, call, email, uh, any of us, including me, maybe especially me, and we'll be, trying, be glad to try and tell you more about John Marshall specifically or law school uh, generally. The Honors Program in Criminal Justice is literally unique. Unique is one of those words that's overused. Uh, people use it mostly just to mean something is nice. Uh, this is unique. This is the only program of its kind in any of the 200 American law schools. Uh, even schools much larger than John Marshall. Uh, don't have a faculty as large as we have that focuses on criminal law. They certainly don't have a criminal law faculty with as many years of actual practical experience as we have. Uh, and that is, those facts are absolutely true. And on top of that, there's no law school with a curriculum like this uh, that really immerses folks in criminal justice from the very first day of law school. Instead of just taking a course here or there for the first couple of years, and then maybe in your third year, you could take several. Uh, uh, this is extremely well thought out uh, with an excellent faculty. Uh, John Rapping, who you'll meet as the director of the program, uh, is just national caliber person, and really they all are. Uh, but he's the one that, that is best known around the country, and uh, someday we think the graduates of this program uh, will be just as well known. So they're going to talk to you in more detail about the program. Let me talk to you in more general terms about law school. Uh, and about John Marshall, and about what I think uh, good lawyering is. Uh, probably a reason that you're attracted to come to an open house means you've already made the decision, for the most part, that you want to go to law school. Uh, I don't really have to convince you about that, uh, but the question is when. Uh, and for some people, you know, they really intend to, but they never quite get around to it. Uh, it's like the old story about uh, uh, the couple that were going to wait and get married uh, until they could afford it, and, you know, 75 years later, they're still just dating. Uh, you can never afford it. You can never afford law school. You can never afford to take the time out of your life to do it. You just have to do it, uh, no matter how hard it is. And so that's what we encourage you to at least consider. Uh, on the soundtrack of the movie Ten Cup, uh, which is one of those movies I could watch every week, and, and thanks to cable TV, you almost can, uh, there's a song by Bruce Hornsby, and so I bring you the text of this morning's sermon from that song. He says, oh, I wish I could laugh when I look way back to find out who stole all my dreams. I wish it was easy to face the fact there was nobody there but me. If it's your dream to be somebody who can do well while doing good, somebody who can be a leader in your community, somebody who can help people solve really, really hard problems, uh, to be, put yourself in a position where you can do something to help someone that literally no one else, including other lawyers, can do or will do. Uh, if that's really your self-image and what you want to do in the future, I believe that this is the right law school in the right place at the right time. The mission of John Marshall Law School is to prepare highly skilled, ethical, and professional lawyers who possess a strong social conscience. I came here from California. You may know that... Uh, uh, in California, by law, you're required to have a mantra. Uh, my mantra was, lawyers treat their clients the way their law professors treated them. Now, when I say that to a room full of lawyers, they gasp in horror and say, oh my God, I hope I treat my clients better than I was treated. Uh, but the faculty here is different. It really, really is. Uh, accessible, supportive, 
uh, concerned about you individually, making lifelong friendships, mentoring relationships. Uh, these are the kinds of people that 5, 10, 20 years from now you can pick up the phone and call to brag about something you did well, uh, to get some sympathy for something that happened that shouldn't have happened, uh, to get some advice uh, about a tough position they find themselves in. Uh, you'll build great friendships with your colleagues, your, your classmates, you would sort of expect that. You'll be surprised by the kinds of friendships you make with your faculty members here. The Georgia Supreme Court has a mantra too. Uh, its motto is, let justice be done though the heavens fall. Today's not a good day to be telling lawyer jokes. Uh, we're really not going to put up with lawyer jokes. Instead, we'll talk about people like John Adams who represented the British soldiers uh, from the Boston Massacre, the most unpopular clients, uh, at a critical time when nobody else would stand up and help them be tried and treated fairly. Uh, there are lawyers in Atlanta and around the country representing detainees in Guantanamo. Now, nine, ten years later, uh, people guilty or not caught up in a, a legal system that not even Kafka could imagine. Uh, and they're doing it for no money, uh, bad publicity, uh, no results they can brag about just because it's the right thing to do. Uh, and so you've got stories of great American lawyers from the beginning of our history to today, uh, and we want our graduates to be part of that, that very long tradition. Um, we have a seminar here that, that normally is in the fall. We held it in the spring this year, but normally it's in the fall called the Fred Gray Social Justice Seminar. Fred Gray. Uh, had been in practice in uh, Montgomery, Alabama for about six months uh, when Dr. King called him and said, we got to go get Ms. Parks out of jail. He's one of those civil rights lawyers really not known outside the borders of the state that he practiced in. Uh, didn't work for the NAACP, wasn't known nationwide. And there are people like him in every state. There are people like him in Georgia that aren't known really outside of Georgia and not really as well known as they should be for what they've done. Uh, the kind of courage that it took to do something unpopular uh, at a really troubled time is the kind of courage that we want to nourish, uh, to nurture while you're here at school. Uh, one final bumper sticker quality motto comes from a former Georgia Supreme Court Justice who said, service is better than salary, duty more important than reward. You either, you either buy that or you don't. Uh, and if you don't, have another bagel on your way out. Uh, but really, we think you're here because you buy it. Let me tell you what I think the four traits of a good lawyer are. Um, other people might have other lists or put these in a different order, but hey, it's my speech. Uh, so here I go. First, character. Uh, this is going to be, in my mind, the single most important thing uh, that counts in being a good lawyer. Thurgood Marshall said there's only one kind of a reputation uh, that a lawyer gets in a hurry. And of course, that's a bad reputation because it takes longer to get a good reputation, longer for uh, your clients, uh, other lawyers, judges, to see that you are a person of your word, a person who can be trusted, a person who can be depended on, uh, a person who will uh, show up uh, on time, uh, do what they're supposed to do, do more than they're supposed to do. That's how you build a good reputation. Now, judging from some of the law school applications uh, we see, there have been a few hiccups along the way. Uh, things I call stupid college tricks, like trying to drink all the beer in the world uh, when, in fact, they can make more. Uh, you're really entering a profession, not just in August when law school starts, but really now uh, when you're getting serious about it. And that means you just have to stop that stuff. Uh, don't even think about getting a DUI. Uh, pay your debts. Uh, get caught up on obligations that uh, you've fallen behind on, whatever they are. Uh, you'll be judged as a professional uh, really, from the moment you enter law school, so prepare for that. Facebook pages. Oh, my God. Clean those up. Uh, uh, the, the kinds of things you, you've said about yourselves uh, and allowed others to say about yourselves uh, you know, is bizarre in any context, but in the context of applying to be a lawyer, uh, it's just so defeating. Uh, it, it will not be enough uh, later on to sit for the bar exam in Georgia or somewhere else Every state also has a character and fitness procedure. Uh, and that looks at your character, your conduct, uh, what you did before you came to law school, what you did in law school. One of the things they look at most is, were you truthful on your law school application? Uh, we asked some tough questions on the application, uh, and people may be tempted to fudge just a little bit or leave out a few things. 
Frequently, with the character and fitness process, it's more important to them that you lied about your conduct on your application than the conduct itself. You know, uh, open container, well, who cares about that? But if you got into law school because you didn't disclose it, that's a very big deal to them. Um, so be very careful, uh, and if you've already submitted applications to us or other law schools, go back and change them now if you need to change them. Uh, but most of all, think like a professional uh, from now on. Um, we, we want to know that you can be trusted with people's fortune, ultimately, in some cases, even with their lives. Uh, and we, we can never know for sure, but we can go by smaller bits of evidence about whether that's likely to be true. Uh, as for law school, like the wizard might have said in The Wizard of Oz, we can't give you good character, but we promise not to damage it as much as other law schools might. Uh, we want to, we, we assume you're coming for the right reasons. We want to give you examples in our faculty, uh, the kind of teaching that encourages uh, those traits, and we want to leave you, uh, you to leave here even uh, more determined to do the right thing than when you came. A friend of mine who teaches at the BYU Law School, James Gordon, once wrote, good lawyers must have the skills required for professional competence, but this is not enough. They must know how to carry the burdens of other people on their shoulders. They must know of pain and how to help heal it. Lawyers can be healers. Like physicians, ministers, and other healers, lawyers are persons to whom people open up their innermost secrets when they have suffered or are threatened with serious injury. People go to them to be healed, to be made whole, and to regain control over their lives. These are large and important tasks, and they require all that we have to offer. They require both good minds and good hearts, not only mental acuity and professional skill, but also compassion, righteousness, mercy, and strength to suffer and carry pain. That is what it takes to be a really good lawyer, and the world desperately needs truly good lawyers. So I num say number one is character. Number two is diligence, uh, just sheer hard work. The actor Tom Hanks was asked one time if he had ever thought about being a lawyer. He said, goodness no, being a lawyer is like doing homework for a living. Uh, and that's pretty much right. Uh, one lawyer said that the practice of law is tedium punctuated by moments of terror. Um, it is hard work. It's not sexy and glamorous like on TV. It's not uh, Law and Order uh, or Ally McBeal or CSI Milledgeville or any of these other shows, uh, it's just a lot of put your butt in the chair uh, and do the work. It's a lot of reading. Uh, uh, most of you, especially younger folks, are not acquiring your information from the printed page. Nothing really to be ashamed of. Uh, that's the way the modern world is. That's not the way the law school world is. Uh, you will read hundreds of pages a week. Uh, it's very common in the first couple of weeks of uh, your first year in law school to suddenly need glasses or need stronger glasses. Uh, and my best advice for someone thinking about going to law school uh, this coming August is to start reading now. Not law books, but, you know, read something tough. Read Deutsch Javesky if you never have. Uh, I'm very deficient in Shakespeare. That's what I should be reading. Uh, read the newspaper. Uh, you know, my son last fall said, this, who's this Romney guy? What's that all about? I said, I'm sorry, I don't answer questions about current events for people who don't read the newspaper. Um, so just, just be more knowledgeable about everything. Uh, be diligent in, in learning that. Um, number two, then, is diligence. Number three is intelligence. By intelligence, I don't mean IQ scores, really. Uh, I mean walking around sense. I mean emotional intelligence. You'll be dealing with people. Uh, can you understand people? Now, the LSAT score, of course, is a big piece of getting into law school. There's no way uh, to deny that. Uh, but the truth is that if you get a really good LSAT score, that qualifies you for a job taking the LSAT. Uh, there's no such job. Clients do not come into your office and say, here's my problem, uh, and we have four choices, A, B, C, and D. Clients don't even know what the problem is. Uh, they don't know the question, much less the choices. Uh, that's the role of the lawyer. And a lot of that is just knowing people, uh, recognizing patterns and problems and issues because you've seen them in school, you see them in practice, and after a while, uh, you become the expert uh, that frequently knows the right answer and, more importantly, if you don't, knows where to find the right answer. So third uh, is intelligence. Fourth, I say, is knowledge. Why would a law school dean 
put knowledge at the end of the list. After all, you're paying all this money, spending all this time to acquire knowledge. Um, well, knowledge is good, but if you've got all the knowledge in the world about the law, but you don't have the character, you're an unguided missile. Uh, you're going to cause real damage somewhere. Um, knowledge is important. One of the hardest things, especially for a young lawyer to do, is to say, I don't know. Uh, my goodness, you've got the diploma on the wall. People are proposing to pay you money to give them advice. So you just feel like you've got to tell them something. Uh, it really takes some guts to say, I haven't seen this particular problem before. Or, or, you know, these facts are a little different. I'm not sure about the answer, uh, but I'll, uh, I'll look it up. I'll get back to you right away. Uh, you would think clients would go away, well, he or she must be stupid. They really go away thinking, wow, how thoughtful, uh, how cautious. Uh, how thorough. Uh, uh, so it's not just knowledge in the sense of knowing everything you learned in law school, uh, but being able to say, I'm not sure I do know, but I'll look it up. And you know how to look it up. Uh, and even if you are an expert in the field and you handle the, basically the same kind of case over and over again, the law keeps changing. You've got to go to continuing legal education. You've got to keep up with publications. Uh, in recent cases, you never stop learning. Uh, that homework never ends. Uh, it just keeps going even after you're a lawyer. Someone said that law school is like a besieged city. Everybody inside wants out, everybody outside wants in. Uh, and so you're right now on the outside wanting in. Uh, some of the students you've met today are on the inside, they really want out. Uh, but what will make you succeed both inside and outside, uh, I think, is to come with the right character, to be willing to work hard, uh, to have walking around sense, to understand people, and, uh, and to learn what you're supposed to learn and learn how to find out what you don't know. And that's really what we're all about at John Marshall. I hope you never look back and regret not trying or not trying hard enough. I wish I could laugh when I look way back to find out who stole all my dreams. I wish it was easy to face the fact there is nobody there but me. So have a great day. Make sure we answer your questions and, and learn more about uh, criminal justice especially, but any other thing you need to know about John Marshall or about law school, we want to help you do that, and we'll see you in August. Thank you very much. Sure. Yana's program in criminal justice is unique. Uh, unique is sometimes a, a misused word. This one is unique. It is literally the only program of its kind anywhere in the United States. And it really is the only program uh, in the country uh, that works with students uh, in their first year who know that they want to explore careers in criminal law. We get a lot of hands-on time and face time with our professors. So it's not your typical law school experience. This is focused on your future and focused on you individually. It's a really special experience. Courses are designed in such a way to prepare the students for the practice of criminal law. And each of the courses is connected to other courses in such a way that criminal law is emphasized. Not just the theoretical aspects, but also the practical aspects. It's an integrated program. It incorporates writing and argument skills. We're going to do a writing portion, writing motions, and then arguing them. And so we'll get a chance to use those skills in the externship field and use them in a real world setting. And all of our classes are catered to criminal justice. So our legal writing and our torts and our civil procedure even, we um, highlight the, the criminal aspects that could come into play. So. The class size, we have 10 people in our group. You're able to get everything from one source and it's nice to have everybody on the same page in your class. It's a much more personal experience. You're more vested in other people around you doing well and understanding, you're more willing to work with people that you know. The relationship with your professors, uh, they sort of learn to know you, and it's just a more conducive atmosphere to learning. They inspire me every single day when I um, attend their classes. Most of them are practicing attorneys or were practicing attorneys, and they were some of the best practicing attorneys in the country. And that today I believe that they are some of the best um, professors in the country. They motivate me to be a better person and to be a better attorney when I graduate. The curriculum is integrated and connected in such a way that students receive a focus on criminal law, criminal procedure, and related courses that will allow them to be successful for the practice 
of law um, in the real world. We're going into the world prepared for what the system really is rather than the ideals of how it should work and how it should function. And I think it may, it'll make us better capable to handle the challenges that we will face. The type of student that we see coming out of John Marshall, they are motivated to do great things and they have enough confidence because they've been trained to do the best. And that's what you want in anyone who's going to be successful in whatever they do. A law student once famously said, the first thing I lost in law school was the reason why I came. Oftentimes students come to law school and they very quickly lose that passion because law schools don't always nurture the passion to make this world a better place. And I think what we really try to do with the honors program in criminal justice is to make sure they really do feel like they're making a contribution to the community and to the world. They'll leave with uh, a kind of experience that no other law student who thinks they want to do criminal law someday uh, could ever have. Thank you.